Uh, thanks for coming. Understandable enough? Distance, etc. It's okay. Um, yeah, Drupal UX stuff. So my name is Roy, a uh, long time doer of UX things for Drupal. Um, and Drupal 8 has shipped, so we have new. <laughs> uh, we have uh, room again to do new and exciting things. Um, and that's what we, what we want to talk to it, discuss today. Uh, I hope you've all been uh, to the keynote this morning. Uh, there's, there will be some parallels in, in, uh, in this uh, talk as well. Um, so, no news, but we got issues. And uh, they do need work. Um, this is not news, and actually, in fact, we've done more than, uh, we've done multiple usability tests on core, and the results have basically become predictable. Because we're not tackling some of those, right? Uh, there's a, bit, a couple of elephants in the room that we're skirting around, and uh, which means that for Drupal 8, we kind of have to reinvent our approach. And luckily, uh, there's some changes in what we'll be and how we'll be releasing Drupal 8 moving forward, so that there's, there's uh, room to change our process. Basically, we want to do more and we want to do faster. And instead of planning our new usability tests, we should plan and focus for getting more new interesting things that we can test eventually. So um, Boyan, Angie, Gabor, and I, in that corner, there. Uh, we wrote up a, a, a first post uh, on groups.drupal.org where uh, we provide an outline uh, of things that we think, uh, where we should start with changing things in order to achieve a new kind of momentum and make so achieve this kind of momentum that we need and make sure or more sure that improvements uh, uh, designed and built will actually land in core. Um, spilling the beans from the front, the main talking points for today, uh, as in, the, in that post, are uh, we need to tackle the big issues. Uh, we've avoided them uh, long enough, but we have to do something about them. Uh, that means that we have to create room to experiment, ideally in core itself, find ways to somehow lower our standards and play, uh, and find, uh, yeah, find room to play in core, uh, ideally, so that we can test new things. In order to do that, we have to decrease our upfront design effort. Um, there's a lot of development effort as well, so, but we're talking UX here, and it all relates, but we have to decrease our upfront effort, um, and we have to get more clarity on the priorities so that we can be more sure, well, so that we can focus our work and be more sure that uh, the things we're working on will actually land in core. Um, I guess Dries discussed the visionary why of Drupal uh, as a thing this morning. Um, the best open web platform for great experiences. I subscribe to that idea. Uh, it's why I contribute to Drupal UX. I want more people to be able to own their thing on the internet. But not news, but we're making it quite hard for new people to, uh, uh, to understand that Drupal power and make it their own. So we have some basically systemic core-wide uh, UX issues uh, that run through the whole system as it is today. And I want to start out with uh, depressing you all with that list. <laughs> and then we'll uh, look at uh, how we can change that. So this is a high-level summary of the things we keep finding in, uh, in when doing usability tests. This is basically the most critical of critical <laughs> UX issues uh, we have. Um, so for context, we're testing 
if, when we're testing uh, Drupal core, then we've basically always tested core without any extras. And the participants were very smart web people without Drupal experience or with little Drupal experience. So these are smart people. They're in the business of uh, doing things with CMSs and building stuff for the web. Um, so it's, it never is, but it's not their fault that they're stumbling. So, and one of the things is that uh, our terminology is weird. We use weird words for familiar concepts. We use different words for essentially the same thing. Blocks, panels, panes, etc. And I'm sure there will be examples of where we're using the same words to mean different things in different contexts. Context. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, wording is a, is a critical UX thing. We don't connect the dots for people. Um, there's no getting started info. There's no, once you've done this, go do this. So we're not helping people become successful. Um, so we have sm uh, small pieces all right, but they're not even loosely joined at this moment. And, uh, well... This is, these are actual quotes uh, from uh, testing participants. They have no clue where to go. We don't help people with a main path, and et cetera. Making that even uh, a bit more difficult is that we're not putting first things first. Uh, our current process makes it very hard to decide what's more important than the other. Uh, so we don't make that distinction. Uh, we present everything in a same visual weight. Uh, and um, that makes it hard for people to decide what to do next. We're, uh, you know, we can decide on the 80-20 the use case, so we compromise and uh, make it uh, hard for everything. <laughs> make everything hard to find. <laughs> Uh, one of the big examples is the, uh, the structure page itself, which has, uh, if you would enable, no, if there's uh, comment types and content types. I keep clicking comment types when I want to go. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We, in the 80, 80s, 80% 80 is content types, right? I don't, I don't think comments even gets to 20. Um, Views, because we do alpha sorting, because we can decide, <laughs> so we do alpha sorting. Views is at the bottom, and it's a pretty important piece. Um, previews meaning not necessarily actual previews, because that's what we're lacking, basically. Previews meaning hitting save on a thing you're making, go visit it in the front end, see what you've done. No, that's not what I wanted. Or it's getting there, but I want to make changes. Go back up the admin hierarchy, go back to that page, make changes, hit save, look to the front end, and back and forth. That's really suboptimal in, in workflow. And that makes people lose confidence. Not good. Similar to that is that the order in how you have to do things is backwards. Um, yeah, so a site builder example would be, people want to just add checkboxes to their content type and then say that those checkboxes should provide the options for the lunch preferences for DrupalCon, for example. But for that, now you have to first create that vocabulary somewhere and add the right terms and then you have to add a obscurely named <laughs> term reference to your content type so that eventually you'll have some checkboxes show up. So that's really quite backwards. You have to set up those containers, the, the abstract placeholders, that vocabulary first, before you enable yourself <laughs> to add those to the content type so that people can actually fill them out. The mental model, the, the expectation is, uh, let me add checkboxes and configure that to mean uh, lunch options and that those are, uh, that, and if that creates a new couple of terms in a new vocabulary, uh, let people find out. But shouldn't be an issue up front. 
ideally. All that together makes um, the standard installation is just too sparse. There's nothing in there. There's a lot in Drupal 8, right? There's views and all the things, but we don't make it available. We don't show it. Uh, sample content, uh, getting started instructions, similar to the wayfinding, but it's basically that we don't provide initial features. Um, and a more specific one, but also pretty critical in the sense that people uh, feel like they're breaking things. Posting that first article creates a very weird homepage. <gasps> Did I put it there? I didn't put it there. Uh, <laughs> The river of news model is uh, uh, is a bit outdated, and but after that first post, it's straight up confusing. Um, all that together, we're at the end of the list. <laughs> um, and this is weird. All that together, people are not confident, and people um, see Drupal as limited, which is the complete opposite of how we're selling it. It feels limited, it feels, and they feel like they can break it easily. And if people don't find out that there's an extent page where you can add modules and uh, enable more functionality, then there's a module for that is not a viable answer, right? That doesn't count then, because people don't find that out. <coughs> so yeah, that's the <laughs> diagram of that. <laughs> Uh, we have a lot of Drupal, we have a big ecosystem, uh, we have a quite arbitrary circle that we ship as being core, and uh, there's no ways for, people don't find out about the rest of it. Okay. Uh, which reminds me of a core conversation I would have had five or six years ago if it were not for some vulcano, vulcano in Iceland. Um, where the, I think that was the first one we were to have core conversations, but this is the problem, right? Drupal can do everything, but core does nothing, almost nothing really well. And uh, the idea there was, wouldn't it be great if we could provide install profiles with sample content, etc., so that people can choose to build a great, my first portfolio or a great blog or the business website, give people presets and help them become successful. So now we know why people fail in understanding the Drupal Awesome. So what do we have to change then? Well, we have to change the core product. And um, yeah, we make pr product decisions every day. Every time we commit something to core, we make implicit product decisions. And uh, one of the goals should be moving forward to make that more explicit. <laughs> so that's the, that first talking point, right? We have to start finding a way to tackle the big ones. We've already gotten a lot better at having, running big initiatives and splitting up the work and defining from that big vision the individual tasks that we want to uh, achieve in order to get something. But that divide and conquer approach also makes us rather risk averse. It also blends the, the actual result into potentially not that spectacular as it could have been. So, um, we need to tackle the big ones. Yay, initiatives, data modeling, layouts, uh, the outside-in approach of making workflows uh, uh, more like people expect them to be. Uh, the content workflow, yay. Media, etc. So, yeah, Dries agrees. <laughs> we need <laughs> to tackle some of these big issues in that way. Uh, Drupal 8 UX means we need, we want to uh, make bigger changes and have shorter release cycles. So how can we make that combination work for us? I think there's a way, but that means that we have to change our process. 
how. So one more look back. Duple 7 UX, I think uh, the, the content creation page is I think the biggest obvious change we've made. We've made different ones, but mostly incremental changes. Uh, requiring that huge upfront design investment. I looked up uh, all the comments we generated by just that layout discussion, basically, for the, the content creation page, excluding WYSIWYG, excluding the, uh, the previews, etc. cetera. Uh, that's not sustainable. Uh, we're a small UX team, but even a big UX team would, <laughs> uh, would, uh, wouldn't get things done. Um, so we, we have this huge upfront design investment. We perfect uh, uh, one single idea um, and we validate it mostly after the fact, as in after committing it to core, even after shipping core. Not, not always. We, we do test individual features, uh, but mostly in the form of patches, so the code is already written. And, uh, uh, a pain uh, every core contributor feels is that all uh, your efforts, there's no certainty um, right up till the end, so all efforts can be derailed at any time, and you shouldn't want that. So tackle the big ones, decrease the upfront design investment. How? Well, we, I think we should look in what the Lean UX approach gives us. Um, by generating and prototyping more ideas, validate before actual code is written, and become more clear on what we want to work on, and find some uh, way to frame that effort and make it more uh, predictable that it will reach some kind of finish line for a, a next point, uh, eight point X release. So our goal should be to dramatically decrease the upfront investment necessary for finding out if a design or feature is useful, usable, and in the end mature enough to graduate uh, to Drupal core. So the, uh, the whole Lean UX thing, uh, the current process means that we're right, there's too much work, right, and any significant change can up take up to months worth of design discussion and code. Um, uh, months of work for the redesigned content creation pages does not scale. So what uh, can we maybe learn from uh, things like Lean UX? So beware all the buzzwords, but uh, Lean UX combines or picks and chooses approaches from user-centered design, uh, agile development, sprints, scrums, etc., and uh, elements from the lean startup method, where the build, measure, learn cycle is the big one. And that also means that we should try and move from the consensus-based approach we have now to a ex more experiment-based approach. So we have to find ways to get us uh, work ourselves faster um, through this loop, where we say, okay, we think. We know we need to change this or we uh, want to build this. We need to improve this. What is the minimum we have to do to build, to design, to be able to test or experiment um, so that we can get the right feedback, so that we know which... What does this mean? <laughs> Is this lean you are? <laughs> this was a small glimpse into a future. <laughs> The basic idea is that we want to define or formulate our, a hypothesis uh, for an idea that we want to validate or invalidate as quickly as possible with the least amount of effort necessary to feel confident that we're making a right decision. So what's, uh, th that's that MVP part, eh? where you have ideas, we have initiatives, say, and um, well, we have to have a plan for that, but we also have to have an approach for f 
validating that plan, basically. And that's that MVP. And I think this is an important, one of the important messages for how we should be thinking about shipping features and structuring our work. On the left side, if we, uh, so the minimal viable products, right? So what's the essence of what we're trying to build? And we shouldn't, I don't think we should fall in the, basically the old way or in the trap of focusing on just API so that eventually we'll have uh, something cool. We have to have that vertical slice that uh, not only gives us something functional, but reliable and usable and desirable as well. So we have to find a way that we ship 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, not only with API improvements because eventually, but each point release should have something cool to write a nice release announcement for. Because if you do that, um, my hope is that we have a lot of untapped contribution resources. Um, if we know that, uh, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but yes, I am. Initial MVP should not necessarily require code, so we want to validate before we start doing the actual heavy lifting of writing implementation code. Ideas, concepts, approaches uh, can be validated with really rough protos, uh, paper prototypes, clickable wireframes, HTML, JS, mockups, etc. So that's what we want to work on um, and validate before uh, doing the heavy lifting uh, in, in core and, and actual core patches, actual code. So, and the third element is, okay, uh, how can we become better at making sure that <laughs> efforts will result in something that does make it into core? Uh, like I said, uh, usability tests already, uh, we already know what we need to work on. Dries outlined some initiatives and we can add to them, but that's, that is the stuff we need to work on. Um, up till now, we've been, that has been mostly implicit and we need to become more explicit about that, right? We're now making those product decisions just by committing stuff. Now we have to become better and more explicit about, okay, and this effort is towards that goal. Yep, roadmap. Um, yeah, focus the, the contribution of people who are, are, are already working on it. And I think this is the, the uh, untapped uh, contribution resources that, whatever, uh, say, if we know that we're working on media and we want to ship a library uh, in 8.2 or 8.3 or whatever, then companies, Drupal shops, can say, that's worth something. I want to uh, assign one or two developers, designers, whoever, for the next six months to work two days on this. So if we may, are more clear about, uh, uh, about what we're working on. Um, so this is <laughs> the handover to, uh, to uh, the, the core conversation with uh, Angie and Gabor will be having later. Um, this ends up in the realm of product management, right? So if we have multiple uh, initiatives going on, then we should make sure that within each vertical, within each initiative, we make sure that ideally for every point release we have something uh, to show for end users. And uh, if at times that's really hard because we do have to clean up and add uh, our APIs first and we have, and we can manage across all initiatives and uh, le uh, let workflow uh, do their thing for a bit and uh, write a cool um, press release or con uh, release uh, announcement about how we're working on the field you buy for contact forms or added even more file entities, et cetera. By the way, this is just a proposed outline. This is not, so yes. Not promises about what we're doing. No, no, no. Disclaimer, disclaimer. Very good, very good. Uh, this is uh, hypothetical.
Who are we doing this for? Another discussion that we are not uh, often that clear about. Uh, Dries discussed persona as well, and uh, I was happy to hear <laughs> that we have to focus on, uh, you could say, the authenticated people in the middle, right? People who don't code, but they have some permissions in core to do stuff. Um, and we have to get a better grasp on the goals and needs of, the, of those people. And uh, basically that means we need to have, find a way to do some continuous discovery of user needs. Uh, the survey is great, uh, but we should get more uh, insights on what it means for people to have content workflow. What does that, I mean, if five people agree that we need content workflow, that doesn't mean we need, that they mean the same thing. Right. Um, Chris, making a guest appearance on this core conversation. We had a nice idea about this, and uh, his actual core. Oh, yeah, five minutes. That's uh, starting. Thanks, Roy. Now. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. I'm Chris Weber, software development for the Nerdery. Like all of you who are here today, I'm very excited about the new era of usability experience, both uh, the development that we can have and the research. I asked Roy to pitch this idea about participant-led usability research. It's an idea a colleague of mine brought up. The basic idea of it being, and how do I, okay, there we go. Um, oh, I did too fast. Your laptop, I'm not a Mac user. Okay, there. Um, basic idea of participant-led research is that we do not come with a script. The script comes from the participant, the participant leads the usability research study. They come with, or we ask them for, a set of three to five different tasks that they want to go over. You sit there, you listen to them, you watch them go through the tasks, you ask very pointed questions, you ask them about their intent, what they're doing. You try to gather up all this research because it is also about what tasks that they select that is also important in teaching you about what are the tasks that are important for this user in general? And in the aggregate, when you collect all that information, you can get a lot of inf good information about what tasks are users finding important with their site. Um, and then afterwards, um, you can ask them about if they feel if those tasks were successful or failures and why. Gather that information as well. Next slide. Come on. Thank you. Why? Why would we do usability, uh, user-led research uh, participant? Uh, five minutes. Um, we, we start caring about what they care about. We start reviewing the tasks that they care about. Um, we give them the ability to control the process, to feel that they have control over the research, the process, so that they can uh, put the actions that they find important under, under scrutiny, and we can um, uh, gather the information about what tasks are, are important. The idea of this being that we can create an apparatus that has, um, next slide please, come on. Thank you, that's so slow, how do you manage? Uh, <laughs> you could just, it'd be a, a simple apparatus. You could have a laptop with a vid cam and that's it. Um, you, so you can record the screen of what the person is, is using and, and their face because visual interaction, their, their, their reaction to specific steps also communicates a lot of things. And with this very simple apparatus, we could take it on the road. We could take it to Drupal camps. We could, this is an idea that works at Drupal scale. We could go to the cons. We can go to the Drupal camps. We can start reviewing the people that we really should be reviewing, people who never come to Drupal camps, Drupal cons. We can, with this apparatus, we can go to clients' offices. We can review them in their comfort zone. We can go to WordCamp. We can go to Midwest PHP. We can go to usability research uh, conferences. We can go home <laughs> to your parents, to your children, and get their perspective, perspectives we've never really tapped into before. Um, and I don't need the rest of the 30 seconds because that is it. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Power. Other side, it's a Mac. <laughs> um, the title was uh, Approaches for uh, change is big 
and small, so what about the small ones? Um, if you look at the, the proposed initiatives and the, the features that we need to work on, there's one thing, but there's these more systemic uh, paradigms or design principles that we need to change, right? And one of the big, really big improvements in Drupal 7 was cutting and rewriting lots and lots of the interface text, just removing redundant, unnecessary instructions or uh, repetitive words. Um, things like the interface copy, uh, creating a, 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 an, an update to 17 that enables that more clearer prioritization of how we present things. Uh, that uh, restructuring of the inf uh, inter information architecture of the admin, uh, outside in workflows and all the, these kinds of things are things that don't have to be an initiative, that can be ongoing efforts uh, that we can start chipping away right at right now. And there's probably even, there's probably uh, a big initiative in interface copy, but that's probably Drupal 9 because that hits all the things. If we do a really uh, a thorough terminology cleanup, then we're <laughs> ripping out so much and we're, uh, we get a, such a big cascade of what we need to update in, in docs and code, etc. But ne next to these big features, we can start chipping away at these at these things as well. Right. These are our discussion points. Um, Gabor has some time available to get the whole UX team up and running. Um, one of the things we're starting is uh, DrupalUX.org. Uh, Gabor was, of course, the hero of uh, the multilingual initiative, or at least enabling the multilingual initiative, let's say. <laughs> um, and uh, we're using the same approach uh, for bubbling up the right tasks to work on. This is all early days still, so no initiatives to be found here just yet. But take a look. Uh, we're starting to tweet at Drupal UX. Um, that's the, uh, the post on groups. Happy to hear your comments. I booked a buff session right after this session if we want to continue the conversation. But for now, discuss. Thanks. Hey. Uh, so a few things I should have made notes. Maybe I remember all of them. So um, first thing about the participant-led UX research, we did similar for multilingual in terms of technology. It was not participant-led, but in terms of technology, we used two laptops and Google Hangouts. So both laptops, you log into the same Google Hangout and you use one laptop as the webcam to record a person and the other laptop as the screen sharing for sharing the person's screen and then you just record both of them. So it's yep. really, you don't need really, nothing special, no special software, no special hardware or anything, just two laptops. So very easy to do. Um, for for, um, for the initiatives I, what I'm so I have mixed feelings because uh, in, on in on the one side I really like the value in making this plan out for a year and a half two years on the other side whatever we plan when it meets reality is not gonna happen right so on the one side making promises to people that will not be that may not happen at all is not good. Yep. On the other side, it's good to inspire people with these nice um, animations that Dries did. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to find a middle ground of this may be possible somehow, some way, yep. uh, sometime in two years uh, in what we can actually deliver with uh, mostly volunteers. Um, so I don't know what's the good middle ground there, but. Let's find out, I, right? Anybody, I mean, who has ideas or opinions, or maybe your next point, but <laughs> I mean, you, no. you, you run an, is, an initiative, so you know how, how big a promise you could make, maybe. Um, so one, uh, I'm, did you need me? Um, I'm XJM, I'm one of the release managers for Drupal 8, um, and so talking about the roadmap, and we're always very nervous about putting version numbers next to things on slides, because yep. people, <laughs> that's why I mentioned that. 
But one, thing, <laughs> one compromise that we can make is that for each upcoming minor version, for the, the minor version that's in development right now, we can state what priorities we have for that yeah. minor release. Priorities. Those aren't promises, no but promises. those are. So if we have the combination Focus. of, yeah. for the next minor release, these are the things that we're focusing on. And these fit into our long-term goals. And here's a list of long-term goals we have. Between those two things, we can sketch out roughly, well, we think maybe in, in 8.3 and 8.4 and 8.5, we might get to these steps in core. But we don't actually need to communicate about 8.3, 8.4, 8.5. What matters is that what we're doing right now fits into a big long-term picture. Yep. So I think those that, for me, that's where the balance is between the long-term roadmap and the promises that we make. The promises that we make are, we're prioritizing this right now, right. and we have a long-term idea, so that it's not so much like the, the, the waterfall, this step and next step. That gives us each minor release to go through, see what we get done, test whether what we expect to happen actually does happen, and then revise the plan as needed mm -hmm. for the next minor release cycle as that minor release comes up. So that was, for me, that's where the, the balance is. Cool. So one more thing, a uh, tiny thing. So one of the things that Kevin O'Leary uh, devised is the simple English translation yeah. of Drupal. So he created that on GitHub uh, <laughs> because it was not yet possible to do elsewhere. But now it's on localized.drupal.org. So you can localize Drupal to simple English. Um, and yeah. And that, that allows us to experiment with uh, terminology changes or at least uh, adjustments to text. Uh, already, without without needing to make changes in core. Yep. Uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, it will not allow us to make like you would not be able to replace the word panel or pane right. across every contributed module, the, the, in every single text. Or maybe you could, but it's a it, <laughs> gonna be a lot of work. So uh, so that's a playground to experiment with these changes yep. that allows us to to iterate and figure out what works. Thanks. Hi, um, I was just kind of, I wanted to pitch an idea because um, you were talking about how to do prototypes and, yes. and, and we would like to see more prototypes and, and paper prototypes are, are, are nice too and to get them online somewhere. Right now we have the ability to do that but it's kind of um, not really obvious until you come to the course sprint or the sprint on Friday. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> Redditors actually helps us with embed buttons that allow us to put the images uh, into the yeah. issue queue. And it would be nice to actually have some tools to allow us to present those things right in like Drupal.org, um, and that might be an opportunity for us to like um, uh, get more of that involvement on the issue queue instead. So of that we have in the issue queue a link that says "click here for the prototype." Yeah, or the prototypes, or the yeah. Yeah. Images. Yeah, it makes sense to keep our work centralized in a way, right? Uh, um, it's. I mean, the, the redesign of the content creation page that happened in a Dropbox uh, that five people had access to initially. Um, there's always that balance between a small team that can get things done and <laughs> a larger group that needs to be uh, brought along to make, actually make it happen on the implementation side. Just keeping references to things in the issue queues is uh, always good. Thanks. On that note, uh, <laughs> hi, Jacob. I'm uh, <laughs> at the Drupal Association, work on Drupal.org. Uh, great suggestion. Um, we'll put it on our list. Uh, so actually, my question was about um, blocks and layouts. Uh, so with the Scotch Initiative, a bunch of us have been working on that and sort of pitching um, ideas to, to help try to get that into core. Uh, we actually have a boff right after um, the boff, the UX boff. So that's at 345. We invite you all to come look. I'm trying to remember what the room is, but it's, it's one of those rooms. So it's at 345. Uh, the one question about experimenting, how do you take, so there's one thing about using text and changing you know, the words. But what about, say, you know, we have layouts right now with layout plugin, but that's not, it's a little in conflict with, say, regions and doing something like panels everywhere or doing layouts everywhere. Yeah. And you know, once you put it into core, we felt like in the past you are baked in. It's not like we can move backwards after we do that. How, how are you thinking we can try to move some of this stuff um, into the core conversation or the, the actual core functionality without actually committing to it, really, um, you know, yeah. so that we can experiment? Yeah. Um, 
So one place uh, would be experimental, right? Experimental modules. And um, it would be interesting to see what we, uh, how we can. <laughs> um, so example, field UI. We, need, we want a new field UI with all the draggy droppy form builder uh, functionality. Uh, if we do it for field UI as a whole, for all the entity types across core, then we're not experimenting, right? So we're, we're taking on too much work right up front and we're setting ourselves up for failure. Um, but what if we um, could create uh, a experimental module that only does that for contact forms and scope it to contact forms, which right now uses uh, the same field UI, but can we experiment with a new field UI for just contact forms and for those field types and then see if that works and uh, how uh, hard it is to just get a grip, uh, get an idea of what it all means to, uh, if we want to do that for the whole thing. That's what I would love to see if we uh, can limit the scope uh, of, of those experiments uh, in such a way that they're still representative for 80% of uh, what we uh, want to replace as a whole eventually. Um, yeah, experimental module. Um, maybe install profiles can be our friends as well. Um, looking for ideas there, yeah. Hi, Roy. Hi, Chris. Hey, hey. hey. Oh, uh, that was basically the idea I came up here for, uh, install profiles. But actually, I wanted to talk about <laughs> how um, um, it seems like in the past year, maybe a year and a half, it feels like Drupal is kind of in a different era. Like, oh, there was the era where Drupal was really frustrating for me. And like last year and a half, ever since like the Twig the Bug patch landed last November, Twig has been, I mean, Drupal 7 has been actually really fun and not frustrating at all. Um, and part of the reason why is because of simply test.me. I can go and yes. test any module, That's any another thing. prototyping tool. I can yeah. show the salesperson who doesn't get what I'm saying until I show them um, something that I can actually show them and, and talk about it. Whereas in the past, it was kind of you know, that same situation with Drupal Commerce with uh, the Commerce Kickstart distribution. Now I can just roll a, uh, uh, some kind of Drupal site. It would be really great if we could not even just focus on this being an experimental module, just being a module that is also has a, an install profile or distribution so that you can go to simply test.me and demo what the new interface would be like. Like the module would have all the information about the new interface yep. and then spinning it up on simply test.me would be a way to just immediately jumping to the page that shows the thing. But that means uh, having written actual code, right? Well, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, so it, it, and would be, the, it would be for the, uh, the third or fourth iteration for that idea. We did paper prototypes for the idea. We well, did yeah, yeah, uh, interactive wireframes. Yeah. And then, ah, this looks like the right approach. Let, uh, let's write a patch and see how it holds up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, fixed. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, yeah. Looking for people to help us out, right? Uh, <laughs> so one thing um, that I thought you might talk about with, was the um, the actual process of getting. You had a you had a slide of a circular a, yeah. a, a, a diagram showing like like. Plan, build, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but the, the concept that that didn't convey to me that I think is part of what's being proposed here is that designs themselves are something that um, that gets signed off before we start building. Instead of go and like make a big patch, do a big initiative, do all of the stuff through uh, the core queue, start with a design and, yes. and, and then test the design, evaluate whether th that is a good design, get the sign offs from the people who need to confirm, first of all, that it reflects the functionality of, of the, that the user interface is trying to represent, that sort of thing. Can you talk more about that? Um, 
Mm, yes. Uh, well, um, getting sign off from uh, uh, core committers, core people, I think should follow after validating the concept with the intended audience. And um, that part we should, uh, I think we should try, that's the part where we should uh, be agile and let's say nimble, right? Where we uh, don't have to write uh, the actual patches, etc. yet to know that we are heading uh, towards the right idea. Um, so is your question the, the design process, how that would work? Yeah, exactly. So, so what we know is that the, the Drupal core issue queue does not work well for, uh, for usability specialists, for designers, for that kind of work. That's, yeah. that's one of the problems that you stated at the beginning of, of yeah. um, the session. But how, how, do we re, how do we fix that and replace that process with something that does work why, without further separating the, the design community and the usability community um, from the core developers who are then implementing things. And then there's also this assumption, um, so there's kind of an assumption here that, uh, oh well, don't do all the work of coding until you know you have a design that works, but there's, that's in, in some ways as a developer, that's like coding isn't the hard part, right? Yeah. To some, ex to some extent, like coding is the way that you prototype something True. Fr from a developer perspective. And so how, how, do we, how do we fix that problem so that th this, this qu the answer to the question might be, I don't know, Jess, that's a great question to talk about <laughs> yes. in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, that's my answer. <laughs> um, uh, true, true. Um, so I agree that we have to uh, we have to stay in touch with with the core issue queue, right? Because even discussions in groups the org uh, uh, don't get the eyes sometimes that necessarily uh, for for getting the the right buy-in or sign off on time. Um, no, I don't really know just yet. Um, I'm hoping that the DrupalUX.org site can help us visualize the focus. And uh, we're, not, we're not going to create new content at that. That's an, it's an issue scraper, so we're seeing actual Drupal.org issues there. I think, I'm just thinking out loud, of course, but I think we have plan, issues of type plan first and um, hash out uh, what we want to uh, achieve, but also how we think we are going to know, or how we're going to validate what experiment we're going to run to know that we're doing the right thing. Yeah, um, so, yeah. So, so I think there's certainly a lot of new things that, or not a lot of, there's some new things that we need to introduce. Um, so in some ways we are, so it, I think we are committed to have issues on Drupal.org in terms of discussions and a platform to involve as many people as possible from the existing community. But there are things where Drupal.org is not very good. So one of the things that's already an existing example is um, is uh, this, uh, Google uh, Docs stuff that we put together where we uh, collect designs and other things. Yes, I forgot to mention. Uh, we have a Google Drive that's being sponsored by people. So we have 100 gig for sharing our uh, design assets, etc. cetera. Um, that's one of the tools, right? So there's work going on to collect like visuals and the style and uh, visuals for a style guide and like PSDs to start up your design ideas and start drawing uh, digitally. So that's kind of a tool that we we haven't had anything like that that we could use on Drupal.org. So we set it up for the UX team, and those are the kind of tools and things that we'll promote on on uh, DrupalUX.org. And I think if we'll figure out that the uh, design process is, is in need of a separate tool, then we'll do that like we'll try to use the Drupal UX.org site as like a hub to connect all the things from posts and, and uh, Google Drive and, and Twitter feeds and all kinds of other things. So, so yeah, so the problem for me thus far has been that um, I, I don't have any, I, 
these things are happening and I, I don't, like this, this Google Drive thing, I didn't know existed. Um, so how, how do we, like, we also need to make, find a way to surface that on Drupal.org yes. so that the people who are not, like, I don't consider my, like, I, I wouldn't go, okay, I'm going to work on the usability team now because that's not my expertise. Um, so that there needs to be a way that, that when I, when I am doing something that impacts the UI, I know, first of all, that these conversations are going on and that there are community volunteers and resources there um, who I probably should check with first. Communication, communication, communication. <laughs> uh, it's true, yeah. So, so I think so many, so many initiatives set up their own sites. Because if you yeah. set up your own site, it allows you to aggregate issues, aggregate news, aggregate uh, these kind of separate tools like Google Drive and put up your, your demos and put up your videos. And, like, and then you have your own space. And there is no tool on Drupal.org right now that allows you to do that, at least not publicly. Uh, at least not like you can set up this area where you can like put these together and then you have like visual weights for things like you can actually have a UX for your UX site. <laughs> but like, like, like people understand that. So there is something we have an account for now. Uh, Emily just told me. Mural? Yeah, mural.ly. Uh, so we have an account there for setting up designs. I didn't get it. <laughs> Closer to the mic, uh, please. Sorry, mural.ly. M U R A L dot L Y. Uh, what is it? It's a, it's a <laughs> prototyping tool. She can explain it. Okay. Uh, we got access to a nonprofit account for um, Mural Lee. So it can be used for um, remote collaboration, uh, creating wireframes, workflows, all different kinds of things that we would be able to use for UX. Nice. Happy to have a look. So I don't think that answers the findability or the discoverability. No. So I think that problem, I think the best answer we have so far is we set up our own site and then we put everything there and then it's, it's a, it's a well-tended garden of your things and it's not a random page on groups .org that you may or may not find. We can post it there too so people find it. We can put our posts but I don't think well, do like we posted a lot of things on groups, and I, I don't think we posted this yet, but it's still in the works. So that's why we did yep. do that. And that is not secret. And then I have a semi-related question, which is, um, so on on the usability uh, initiative website that that you and Gabor put together. Um, <laughs> sorry, Gabor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the the question is the the. The things, what are, are the things that you envision being on that page? Um, so you listed a, a, set of, a set of priorities for usability that are thing one, problem, kind of problem number one are these problems that we run into on, on the initial installation for every single Drupal usability test mm -hmm, ever. Mm -hmm. The known problems that s trip up everyone when they learn Drupal that we still haven't solved after 15 years or whatever. Yep. Um, the other kind of usability problem that gets introduced though is that we, we, um, we introduce new functionality and new APIs yes. without putting thought into the user interfaces. Yes. And so that's the other kind of usability work that we're going to need in the Drupal 8 cycle. There's usability problems with core currently that we need to fix related yes. just across the board, but then there's also like the content workflow initiative we were talking about this yes. morning or layouts. How, how do, do it, when, when people are involved in the usability initiative on that site, does that also cross over with the usability work that needs to be done for initiatives to put new functionality in core, like a new layout UI or you know, content deployment, for example? We should find that out, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, um, uh, that's why the DrupalUX.org uh, site is uh, just basically empty and, and has some placeholders right now. Uh, I was curious to hear what uh, the initiatives would be, right? And we are, we've heard that uh, today. Now we can look into ideas. None of these no, things except sorry. the content one are, are real. Terminology, yet. They're yes. all just dreams. <laughs> dreams, people. Yes. Make them real, please. Real, please. No, I'm not real, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's something to find out. We have this, these uh, across core issues that I think we can start chipping away on that don't necessarily need initiative, but that need attention and 
work, uh, but we, um, and how that relates to uh, coordinating uh, the UX designer working on content workflow. Yeah, uh, we have to, um, I think we have to do, like we have to become more explicit about our roadmap and we have to, I think, uh, introduce some kind of uh, weekly, bi-weekly update on, remember, <laughs> we're working on this, this, and this. Um, these, these, and these issues need your attention right now. Remember, it's all towards this uh, common higher level goal. Um, and the interface between those two things, I'm curious to find out. Yeah. Hi, Roy. Hi. Uh, Taco from Gorilla. Hi, so Taco. Let me get this out. You have a beard. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> incognito. <laughs> uh, so first of all, when I get back to Holland, I will we'll talk to my design team and see if they can make up resources to help you guys, because it's super important. Like uh, that, yeah. like that, yes. <laughs> um, the, the second thing is um, what we've noticed in doing big projects, because this is, it's basically a big project, right? It's a huge yep. project. Uh, what really helped us was um, splitting development and front end, and we did this by uh, two theories. The first is what Dries also told today, atomic design. Yep. Um, so f if for those of you who don't know what atomic design is, really look into this, because it's going to make your life easier. <laughs> it means that you can change the CSS code of a button, and all the buttons throughout your entire platform will change, and you don't have to test as much. Um, and the second is that we make out of this um, atomic design, we make the prototypes, like front-end prototypes. And these, this is just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And we actually test those. So I think this flow of testing very early in the process and having the style guide means that if we, for example, make a new module or, if we, or we're going to start one of these initiatives, we can always look into the style guide, what's going on there, yeah. create a prototype, test it, adjust, you know, the lean, and then go into the development process. So, yeah, we should yeah, really look so, into this. So maybe then uh, if we're uh, working on the components thing for, for, uh, the, uh, for the front end, if you have a living style uh, yes. library or pattern library, that's our resource for building prototypes? Yes. Great. I, actually, we, we're working on a distribution. We've been working yep. for five months now on the design with four FTE. Um, so they are freeing up now because we're going into development and yep. uh, I would love to get them involved in, in the project and see if we can do this. Because having one resource, like what yes. you say, finding out these Google Docs are there, this is, yeah, yeah, as a project uh, manager, I know this. Yeah. Um, and having one resource centralized where everybody can see what's going on, what's being tested and, and how this can be implemented, it's really helpful. So I will Thanks, get to, uh, get we will that. talk. Yeah. <laughs> So I know there's like some worry and some question about uncertainty for how you're going to proceed in the future, but these four things that you have already started are going to help immensely. Uh, and because the DrupalUX.org scrapes from the Drupal.org issues, it will inherit priorities that people set on the issue even if they don't know anything about the DrupalUX.org. And uh, it'll also allow discoverability through tags and stuff. So this is really good direction to go in. I think it'll help immediately. Yay, and, thank you. And we should be done. Yeah, I think so too. Thanks a lot. Uh, welcome. Um, so if we want to talk more, we can move to 291. Uh, I'd be interesting to talk about what we can do at events to do actual Drupal UX work. Should we be doing usability tests? Should we be doing workshops, etc.? Thanks for your attention.